My name is Tammy Miller. In this buffers video, we're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to calculate the pH of a buffered solution after the addition of an acid or a base. In many buffered solutions, we will be adding either acid or base to see how little the pH changes upon the addition to the buffered solution. We use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to calculate what the pH of that solution is after the addition of either the acid or the base. One very important thing to understand is in Henderson-Hasselbalch, it is much easier to use moles instead of concentration, which is what we typically look at as molarity or moles per liter. So we're always going to have to go backwards and take that molarity, that concentration, and make sure that we're using just the number of moles of acid or base in the solution. So we've got two different things we can do. We can either add an acid to a buffered solution or we can add a base to a buffered solution. We're going to start by talking about adding an acid. When we add an acid to the buffered solution, as we said, we want to know the number of moles of acid or base and their conjugates in the solution. We're going to start our discussion with calculating pH when an acid is added to the buffered solution. The first thing we want to do is always calculate the number of moles of acid or base that is in the solution. And we do this using the original concentration of the acid or base that is given to us in the question. Once we do that, we look at the concentration of the acid that is added and figure out the number of moles of protons or acid equivalents that are added. Once we know the number of moles of protons or equivalents of acid that are added, we will add that number to the number of moles of protons that are in the buffered solution. Next, we will subtract the number of moles of protons that we're adding from the number of moles of conjugate base that were originally in the solution. Once we know the number of moles of acid equivalents and the number of moles of conjugate base, we will plug this in to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation Sometimes we add a base to the solution. So we're going to talk about how to calculate the pH of a buffered solution after the addition of either an acid or a base. And this is a very similar process to what we were just discussing. We're going to figure out the pH when the base is added. Here, instead of looking at the number of equivalents of acid that we're adding, we're using the number of moles of hydroxide or equivalents of base that we are adding. Once we have completely neutralized a buffered solution by adding an acid or a base, the pH is going to change very, very quickly. And once we have that neutralization, we need to determine how much of the added base is left over and calculate our POH and our pH from that. For our apply question, we're going to look at what happens when we add base to a buffered solution. So a student is interested in determining how the pH changes when base is added to a buffered solution. The student starts with 100 milliliters of a buffer composed of 0.05 molar acetic acid and 0.05 molar sodium acetate. Sodium acetate here is my conjugate base. To this buffered solution, I'm going to add 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. The question gives me the Ka of acetic acid. The Ka of acetic acid is 1.76 times 10 to the negative fifth. And we want to know what the pH of the solution is after the addition of each of the following volumes of base. We're going to start off with adding no volume of base, no base at all. So what we're doing is we're starting here with the acid conjugate base buffered solution. So what I need to do here is I realize 
I have equal concentration of my acetic acid and my sodium acetate conjugate base. They're both at 0 0.05 molar. So I know that my pH is going to be equal to my pKa. To find my pKa, I'm going to take the negative log of the Ka that they gave me. When I do this, I'm going to use our handy dandy trick. And we're going to have 5 minus 1, decimal point 10 minus 1.6. And we're going to find out that that pH and that pKa is equal to 4.8. I want you to realize pH is equal to pKa. So this is also the pKa that I'm going to be using for each of my remaining questions. So for answer choice A, we're going to be looking at 4.8. The next thing we need to do is calculate the number of moles of acetic acid that are in my solution. Since my acetic acid and my sodium acetate buffer have the same concentration, they will actually have the same number of moles. And I need to do this so that I know how many equivalents of acid and conjugate base I have for when I start adding my sodium hydroxide. So the number of moles of acetic acid is my molarity, which is 0 0.05 moles per liter times my original concentration. And here my original concentration is 100 mils or 0.1 liters. So I start off with 0.05 moles of my acid and of my conjugate base. Now that I know this concentration, I can start adding my sodium hydroxide to see how much my pH changes from the original pH of 4.8. So we're going to start off with part B of our question, which is telling us that I'm adding 20 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So the number of moles of OH is my concentration, which is 0.1 molar or 0.1 moles per liter. I'm adding 20 milliliters or 0 0.02 liters. I find out that I'm actually adding a total of 0 0.002 moles of sodium hydroxide. What this means is this number of moles of base is going to neutralize some of my acid. What this actually means is I'm going to be adding 0 0.002 moles, and that will neutralize that same number of equivalents of acid. So I will be adding this to the amount of base or conjugate base and I will be subtracting it from the amount of acid that's present. So first, let's see how much we increase our base or conjugate base. So I started out with 0 0.005 moles of conjugate base, and I just added 0 0.002 to give me 0 0.007 moles. I'm now going to subtract that from the acid since it was neutralized. And my new moles of acid is going to be 0 0.005 minus 0 0.002 to give me 0 0.003 moles. When I plug this in, I'm going to have my Henderson-Hasselbach pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the conjugate base over the acid. And this is the number of moles of conjugate base and acid I have. So I'm going to have my pKa, which we calculated as 4.8, plus the log of 0 0.007, since I've increased my conjugate base, divided by 0 0.003, since I've neutralized some of my acid. When I do this, I get a pH of 5.1. Even though I added 20 mils, my pH changed very, very little in this example. In my example with 40 milliliters, so first we need to figure out how many moles of hydroxide I'm adding. So I add 0 0.004 moles of hydroxide ions. I'm going to add that to my conjugate base. So I'm going to get 0 0.005 plus 0 0.004 or 0 0.009 moles. The new number of moles of acid I'm going to be subtracting 
So now I just have 0.001 moles of acid left. I plug this into my henderson hasselbach equation, and I have 4.8 plus the log of 0 0.009 over 0 0.001. So now I have a pH that is equal to 5.75. I have a slightly larger change in my pH here, but it's still not that much of a change. And that's because I've not completely neutralized my acid. Finally, we're going to look at what happens when we add 60 milliliters. I still start off with my 0 0.005 moles of my acid and my 0 0.005 moles of my conjugate base. Let's figure out how many moles of hydroxide I'm adding. I have 0.1 mole per liter times 0 0.06 liters or 0 0.006 moles. I want you to notice that this is greater than the amount of acid that I start with. What this means is I'm going to completely neutralize all of the acetic acid that's present, and I'm going to have some base left over. So I need to figure out how much base I have remaining after I have completely neutralized the acid. So I take 0 0.006 moles. 0 0.005 was used to neutralize the acid. So I have 0 0.001 moles of hydroxide ions remaining. And I need to now take this and divide it by the total volume to figure out the concentration of hydroxide that is in my solution. So my concentration is 0 0.001 over 0 0.160 liters. I have 100 milliliters of the original buffered solution and I just added 60 milliliters of my sodium hydroxide. When I do that math, I find out that my concentration is 0 0.00625 molar, moles per liter. I can figure out the pOH of this by taking the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide ions. So I have the negative log of 6.25 times 10 to the negative 3, which is 2.25. Now, that's my pOH. So I need to remember that pH is equal to 14 minus my pOH. So I will have a final pH here of 11.62. Since I neutralized all of the acid that was in the buffered solution, I now have a very drastic change in my pH. Understanding how to use Henderson-Hasselbach and that we have to use the number of moles or equivalents of acid and base will make our acid and base calculations with buffered solutions significantly easier.